Hello there everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some fun and different ways to use your everyday nested dies. I'm going to be using the scrapbook.com exclusive nested oval dies. I'm also going to be using lots of scrapbook.com exclusive products and I'm going to go through them now. So of course I have the nested oval dies and then the permanent adhesive roller. This is also a scrapbook.com exclusive and I love this tape runner for so many different reasons and I'll get into that in the video. I've got this clear double-sided adhesive roll, which is great just to tear what you need. I've got this set of four cyan blue ink bundle from scrapbook.com. And then I also have these scored vertical card bases, and this is Nina Solar White. The first idea that I had actually came from Jennifer McGuire, of course, and this is the shadow pop-up box card. I loved this idea. I thought it was really brilliant when I first saw her do it. And I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of how she said to create this. So you're going to need a piece of paper cut to five and a quarter by five and a half. You're going to go ahead and end up scoring these total for an inch. So on either side, we're going to score at a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to score on the same side at half an inch and I'm going to rotate this cardstock 180 degrees and do the same scores. So a quarter of an inch and then a half of an inch. And I'm going to actually end up doing this to two pieces of cardstock. So if you're following along with me, you'll actually need to do this twice, but I don't do the second one until later in the video. But just for efficiency purposes, I thought I'd tell you that now. As I was beginning to fold my score lines, I realized that I needed to actually send this through my die cutting machine. So I held off on that and took the largest of the nested ovals and centered it between the two of the closest score lines. When this card is folded flat, it's just a standard size A2 card. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So I wanted to go ahead and center that there between those two closest score lines. So now that I've got that cut out, I want to bring some color into this. So I'm using the Oasis color, which is the Cyan 2 of the Cyan family, and I'm just going to go pad to paper here. You can see how beautiful this comes out pad to paper, and I don't know how many people use this method, but I love this for coordinating colors for cardstocks and inks. I absolutely love using this little trick. It lets me have as many pieces of colored cardstock as I need, and I always have it on hand, especially when I want to coordinate it with a ink color that I'm using, and I really love that. So you're going to take those score lines now and fold them, and this is sort of like a Z fold. So the very top is going, or the very first score line is going in, and then the second one is going out, so that you have this little tab here. There will be an identical piece of cardstock that you'll adhere those tabs together, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So now I've got a piece of cardstock cut to four by five and a half. So this will nestle really nicely inside that card front that I just made. What I want to do, and if you noticed in the beginning that there's a bit of a shadow behind the very largest oval die cut, and it's just a slightly smaller oval die cut. And this is so that it looks as if you're peeking in. So how I go ahead and center that is that I just take a pencil and after setting up exactly where I'm going to adhere this piece of cardstock to the inside of my card front, I'm just going to take a pencil and very lightly draw where the opening is. And then once I do that, I can center my smaller, my slightly smaller size of a nested oval die and then send that through my die cutting machine. And this is when I can erase all of that pencil marking after I'm done doing the die cutting. And for this inner piece, I've used Caribbean, which is the cyan one color of the family bunch. And I'm going to, again, just go pad to paper here. And I love this color. It's giving me a very tropical and clear water mood. And I just absolutely love it. In the original picture that I show, you'll notice that my inside oval cut is actually a shade darker, but I'm going to go lighter and I actually quite like the way that it looks lighter. So I went ahead and used that permanent adhesive roller from scrapbook.com and I love this adhesive because 
before you put all the pressure onto it, it's easy just to move something a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. It holds on really well, but if you don't put too much pressure, you're able just to do a little bit of movement. And that really is great for me and allows me to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you with the back piece how this works. So you'll adhere those tabs and then you'll get this really cool pull tab, which will allow you to have movement and three different dimensions in your card. I have linked Jennifer's video in the description, which has a much more in-depth look on how to do this, but this is my final card. I used Heffy Doodle products and I absolutely love the way that this turned out. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into my next tip, and this is actually a twofer. This card has two of my tips in it for you, so I thought that it would be great to show. I'm going to take a piece of tone tanned cardstock, and I'm going to take my largest and next size smallest oval nested dies, and then I'm going to make sure that they're centered and in line with each other. To make sure that doesn't move around my die cutting machine, I'm going to put a piece of low tack tape on it. You can use any low tack tape you have. I use painter's tape. And then I get this really great oval wreath shape that I can do any decorative stuff to that I want. What I'm going to do is use this Altenew wallpaper art set because it is probably one of my biggest obsessions at the moment. I went ahead and colored this in with some Copics and some uh, colored pencils and used a gray color for the leaves, which I think gives a really nice soft look. So now I'm going to use these pre-scored A2 size vertical card bases. And this is great because what I'm going to do is use my largest oval die to create a shaped card. So I'm folding this and scoring it just to make sure that I have a really nice fold there without any cracking. And I'm going to take my largest oval die and make sure that I hang off a bit from the very top. And the where I want the part hanging off of is on the fold. And I'm going to do this so that when I send it through my die cutting machine, it will cut around it, but obviously the part that is not on any paper will be left hanging and then I get this hinge. So I'm able to open and close it like a card base. So this is really great because you can use this really with any shape and make lots of different shaped cards. This size is actually really great for a tag or just to put with a present or a gift. And I'm actually making sort of like a wedding card. So I think it works perfectly. I went ahead and put all of the adhesive all over the wreath part of my card, except for the very top, which is going to be hanging off ever so slightly, but you won't be able to see it because it's the exact size of the wreath itself. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that onto that. And then I adhere my flower with the leaves and I also add a bit of vellum on the inside of that and I just do that by die cutting out a piece of vellum with that second smaller oval piece and I've decided to use the sentiment congratulations on there and like I said this would be great for a tag or just a little card with a wedding gift or something like that. I'm going to continue on and give you just a couple more ideas of ways that you can use your nested oval dies. So I'm going to use my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine, and I'm going to dry emboss these nested ovals onto a piece of pattern paper. I checked my owner's manual, and this is how it tells me to do it, but you'll want to check yours to be sure. I'm going to place these all how they come set up within each other, and these are face up. I'm then using a piece of pattern paper by Altenew and just placing that directly on top and then placing my embossing mat and then my embossing plate directly on top of that to complete the sandwich. Then I go ahead and put it through my die cutting machine and you can see I get this really beautiful indentation and it creates a really great focal point as well. You can use one, two, or all of them like I did and you can also sort of use them around the paper to create a different kind of design if you wanted. My final tip for the day is to use your glimmer machine. I know that Crafter's Companion has one very similar, but I'm using the Spellbinders version. And I'm not sure how many people realize that you can actually use your regular everyday dies and it will foil. The only thing that you'll need to remember is that you're only going to get a foil on the cut line, not the full width or the thickness of that oval. So I'm gonna go ahead and place them on my uh, machine face up and then I'm going to push the timer button. Once the timer button is 
solid green instead of blinking, that means it's ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my foil directly to that, making sure that the shiny part is face down. Then I add my cardstock on top of that, and I try to center it as best as possible, but I always sort of get off to the left or the right, but it's no worries because I cut my cardstock slightly larger than I actually need to, so I'm able to trim around it. I put that through my die cutting machine after I put the shim and the plate on top of that, and you can see when I take off this foil that it's really just created this wonderfully elegant wreath like we did earlier, but this is actually impressed into the paper and we get this really beautiful look. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gotten a few ideas on how you can use your everyday nested dies to do something a little bit different. As always, all of the links are in the description for the supplies and products used today, as well as links to my Instagram, Pinterest, and blog. And I want to say thank you so very much to scrapbook.com for allowing me to create with their amazing products and share them with you today. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.